Hi guys, I'm, hey, I'm in a bit of a rush actually, sorry. We're bonding so well right on the night. I've just got to smarten him up a bit. His gear's minging. Oh, I've just got some bits and pieces to sort out just um, for the show. Blue team tonight, Vladimir Klitschko. I am. We've got Big Tom Davis, great lad. I'm a League of Aaron Virgin. That big foot in the Andersons is huge. The brick walls in. Red team, we've got Nick Adams. The Olympic champion for the second time. Really excited to get going. She's like a smiling assassin. I'm <laughs> a handshake, man, I'm a handshake, man. I don't want to break it. I'll go back to my dressing room, go to use the toilet. Someone's absolutely smashed out <laughs> seven logs and not flushed. <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Let's meet the teams. In the red corner, joining Jamie Redknapp and Ramesh Ranganathan is the woman who does this. <laughs> Terrific variety being shown by Adams. Nicola Adams lets out a triumphant roar, having been crowned as Olympic champion for the second successive time. She is a double Olympic gold medalist and now an undefeated professional boxer. It's Nicola Adams. <laughs> for coming out to see us and on the blue team with Freddie Flintoff as a BAFTA-winning comedian who's quite literally a massive West Ham fan, it's Tom Davis! <laughs> and joining them on the blue team is the man who does this. And we have had a tremendous fight and both of them trying to throw bombs right to the final bell. Klitschko celebrates with the look of a winner. The winner, Dr. Steele. Yes, it's one of the greatest boxing champions of all time. The one, the only, Vladimir Klitschko! Yeah. Yeah. Vladimir, thank you so much for coming to see us. We're all so thrilled that you're here. You have ruled heavyweight boxing for 12 years, uh, with 69 professional fights. When you look back at your career, as you can now, which of those fights do you think you enjoyed the most? Probably the last one uh, here in London a year ago at Wembley with AJ. Can you believe this? I actually lost. <laughs> and I got cheered up at the end, which never happened before. I think, I think for everybody that was in Wembley Stadium that day, and certainly everyone watching at home, they just felt like they had watched a truly great boxing match, is the truth. I mean, Nicola, did you think that when you watched yeah, that Yeah, it was like a Rocky movie. It really was. Yeah. Yeah. Jamie, yeah. Jamie, what did you just say to me? What? Just now. Say what you said to me. He does the voiceover for the meerkats. Sorry, wait, what? <laughs> He just, go, he just goes to me. He just goes to me. <laughs> James, 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 I swear to you, he just let out to go, do you know he does the meerkat adverts? That's what he said to me. Freddie told me. Freddie told you. <laughs> Can I put it to I'm almost certain, I'm almost certain that Vladimir Klitschko is not the voice of comparethemeerkat.com. <laughs> are you? Well, why are you saying that it... Freddie told me yeah, he was. Freddie on Freddie. You said we're going to get meerkats for the kids and everything. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Do you know what we're talking about, Vladimir? Do you know what I, this I is? have no clue because you kind of look like you just woke up <laughs> and what you're saying is like, what did he say? There's it's a... him, you're the man next Wait, to you. Yeah, he's talking. He's, he's, talking. he's trying to get in your head. He's trying him. to get in your head. Can you just say oh, this right. to me? Just say, compare the meerkat. Excuse me? Say, compare. <laughs> Compare the meerkat. Uh, what does that mean? <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I reckon that's pretty conclusive, Jay. That <laughs> Sorry, guys, <laughs> like, you're a prick, right? No, you're no was... it's not funny, though, is it? Now he it's hates me. It's quite funny. It's quite <laughs> funny for us. Do you think even you believe that? Uh, <laughs> Fred, how great is it for you to sit next to a fellow boxer like Vlad? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's nice to be around my people. Yeah. <laughs> the, thing, the thing about it is, I've never felt as small on the blue team. But, <laughs> I, but on the other side, if everyone was like this, I'd be living in a castle bought by Giacomo. <laughs> 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 All right, let's crack on with round one. Blue team, have a look at this. <laughs> yes, that is 
the Fast and Furious world of Thundercat Racing, we sent Jamie, Fred, Ramesh and Tom to the Isle of Wight for the challenge. It was red versus blue with three points up for grabs to the winning team. Now, Fred, you always seem to win these motorsport challenges whenever, you, whenever we do them. Were you confident going in? I was looking forward to it, yeah. We got yeah. Ramesh. Tom was never driven. Right. You know, he's a big lad, isn't he, to get around and win on little boats. You know, sure. He, he stepped in the water, never mind global warming, the <laughs> levels went up. <laughs> I mean, I've got to be honest, I was worried about all of you doing this challenge, but, Jamie, the Isle of Wight Council, they actually got in touch with us with some of their concerns. Not for safety, they were worried about your hair dye causing... <laughs> No, they were, because it was Cow's Week soon. They were worried it was some kind of oil slick. Um... Listen, there's a new threat in town. This guy. Yeah. Since he's joined the show, massive makeover Fred, isn't he? What are you talking yeah, about? Oh, <laughs> he had a hairdresser doing his hair up yeah, after he, helmet. He's a joke. Look, he is. Did you take your yeah. own hairdresser? No, for... I did not take my own hair. And you've been dying that? I've not been dying it. Look, I, look, look at me. Does it look like I've had a makeover? I look like shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Romesh, how did you feel going into this challenge? Well, look, I'm, uh, I'm a son of an immigrant family, so I've been taught to distrust boats. You know? <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's take a look and see how our guys got on in training. Hey, guys, today we're heading over to the Isle of Wight because we're going to be racing these. Teams, Freddie and Tom, and Ramesh and Jamie. One of you is going to be the driver, and one of you is going to be the co-driver. What's the easiest thing to do out of the two? Co-drive. Oh, I'll do that, Fred. I'm worried I'm not even going to fit in. I think we're going to need a bigger bolt, Tom. We're going to give you some lessons. We're going to teach you guys how to properly co-pilot, so then later when we teach you how to drive, that you can work as a team. Oh, fuck's sake! Fuck. Yeah, go. On. Let's just go steady all the way. No, you don't want to go steady all the way, cos you want to win the race, like I'm that. not that bothered. Go on, give it some. Come on, there you go. Turn forward! That's it! Just lean out a bit when we're turning. Spot on, mate. Perfect. Oh, my God, oh, my God! We've not been going full tilt, and I've already shut myself. Yeah, it's all right, it's fun. Oh, oh. I don't know how Ramesh and I are going to do this. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Because he's as scared as I am. I thought I had this in the bag. I'm fucking terrified. <laughs> My ass is going to feel sick. <laughs> so, Jay, what we're going to do is get you to drive straight away, mate. Probably pull towards you. Okay. I'm pretty shit at everything like this. This is my idea of heaven. A little ice cream on the seafront. Open it up, open it up, go on. Jamie's going, but he looks up on the pinchers on those scooters he see going up and down the high street. Ah! It's moving, but we're gumption. I told you I was shit at this. <laughs> and Womish looks absolutely. Womish looks like he's sunbathing. Hard towards you, now for speed again. Oh, God. Go, go, go. Jamie's having a go here. Yeah? <laughs> you all right, boy? You said I'm unbelievable. I see you got quicker, though. You're taking a fist, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Are you all right or not, really? Were you all right? No, nah, rubbish. Have you ever driven some of this, Tom? No, I've never driven anything. Perfect. <laughs> I am desperate for Freddy to be shit at this. That's good, that's good. That's that dream crushing. Tom is just having a nice day out of the beach, by the looks of it. What is that, won't it? Yeah, Tom's a joke. It's actually embarrassing. <laughs> On towards it. That's it. Easy. Nailed it. Fred's getting to me a little bit now. There's no limit to the shit sports that Freddie's done, oh, including just... cricket. <laughs> Tom is going for it. That is brutal. I did think we were going straight on the beach then. <sighs> yeah, I did. Thank you. Sorry for nearly killing you. <laughs> wow. Scary 
Alaska. Tom, what happened? I have no idea we were that close to the beat. <laughs> Genuinely looking at it, that geezer with me, who was the expert, shat himself hard. <laughs> That the trainer took the wise decision that Tom would not be allowed to pilot the boat. <laughs> he actually said, if he pilots the boat, we're going to shut the whole thing down. So, how did you feel about that, Tom? Well, I'm going to just say another thing, actually. They were a right <laughs> gaggle of pricks. <laughs> All of them, fellas. And I'll say it here. If you're going to watch it, they were a gaggle of pricks. <laughs> they were so up themselves about a shitty little sport I'd never even heard of. <laughs> I had to rave it on with them, looking down their nose at me. Now, I'll say it straight, right? And the worst thing of it all, and this is the worst thing, is this was the one time, like, BAFTA aside and all that, my dad was like, do not let me down in front of Freddie Flintoff. <laughs> do not let me down. And I was mortified when I was careering into that beach. <laughs> Romesh. Was it as scary as it looked out there? I swear, honestly, mate, it's one of the most frightening things I've ever done. Like, that was... I, I was ready to walk after that. It was, it was, it was so frightening. And, and they're laughing, obviously, they're loving it. <laughs> oh, look, he's crying, he's crying, look at he's crying. <laughs> Just being absolute gits about it. But, yeah, it was, it's properly terrifying. Properly Fred, Fred looked good, didn't he? Well, this yeah. is the thing. You looked like you were terrific at it. Was it, even, was it ever tr difficult for you? Anything driving, anything to do with speed on... No. Within reason. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I love it. I, I really enjoy it. That's the one thing I love. Now, Jamie and Ron, before the race, you had to pick who would pilot and who would co-pilot. Who did you go for? Ron. As captain, I just thought he's... You know, sometimes you've got to defer and know your qualities, and this man was unbelievable in practice. Really? really uh, yeah, amazing. We had to tailor a few things, because to start with, when we first set out the course, we are going to have to go to his right, which is no good, because he can't see out of his right eye. <laughs> I can see out my right. I've just got a lazy eye, Jack. You're not blind in one no, eye, you said you had to go He's left. Not... <laughs> I think you said you had to go left. He said to me, it's all left turn, so it favours your good side. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Well, it's that time now. Vladimir, who would, you, who would you put your money on here? Would you put your money on Freddie and Tom or Ramesh and Jamie? Of course, I'm Freddie and Tom. You're going to go Freddie and Tom yeah. for the win? All right, well, let's head back to the Isle of Wight for the race. Cows on the Isle of Wight is the setting for the A League of Their Own Powerboat Challenge. The rules are simple. Both Thundercat teams will complete one short lap and one long lap around this course. Freddy's blue team will do their short lap first around the middle mark, whilst Jamie's red team complete the long lap. They will then have to swap routes, the blue team taking the long leg and the red team taking the short one, before they can power to the finish line. But the race will start on the beach with a quick dash to the boats. Conditions are good and we're all set to go. Freddie's been so impressive in training. The question is, have the red team got anything in the locker? Three. Two, one, go! Oh, Jamie gets a bit of a flying start and gets a shove through his troubles as well. <laughs> hey. Oh, Tom's taking Jamie down. That's not in the rule book. What are you doing, Tom? Jamie, get in. Come on, Tom, get in, love. Go on, Ramesh. Freddie on the throttle of the blue boat, Ramesh on the throttle of the red boat. And what a start by the red boat. Jamie and Ramesh are off to an absolute flyer as they head up towards the first mark. Go on, Tom. <laughs> the blue boat with plenty of work to do already. Ramesh, you're on fire! Come on! What's up? Leap forward, Fred says. Oh, that's massive air going round the middle mark as the blue boat turns to do the short lap first. Look at the difference. Jamie leaning into the turn, Tom leaning back. Come on, boy! Jamie loving it as his red boat heads down the course to complete their long lap. Yeah! Well up on my nautical hand signals. I think that means we're in the lead. Where's Rob down? The blue boat's approaching its last turn to get onto the home stretch. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie and Robert have just got to get around the middle mark. But here come Freddie and Tom, full throttle. <laughs> but 
they're running out of time as the red boat pulls in front. Get in there! This has been really impressive stuff from the red boat, and they've won it! With the blue boat just behind. Robert and Jamie have ripped up the ball book from training. Such a great drive. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Congratulations to Ramesh and Jamie, the champions! Out there on the water! Who knew? Sensational! And that's three points to the red team. Well done! Can we say a huge thank you to Thundercat Racing and everyone at Universal Marina. We'll be right back after this short break. Steve McLaren and King Cheat Sergio Ramos. All three have been involved in awkward moments, but what I want to know is, according to our League of Their Own viewers, which was voted the most awkward? Ramesh, uh, what's the most awkward moment you've ever been involved in? It was, a, it was actually not, not that long ago. Like, obviously, I've just signed up for League of Their Own, and yep. I'd done a couple of the shows, and I was at an Indian restaurant, and I saw Jay there, and I thought, I'll go and say hello. I'm not sure if he, you know, we're at that stage where I can come over and say hello when he's having a meal or whatever. I wonder if he'll recognise me. I wandered over, he looked up, he saw me, he smiled. I thought, wicked, he'd recognise me. He said, can I get some more poppadoms? <laughs> <coughs> OK, I felt bad about that, but you did have a waistcoat on. <laughs> uh, what about you, Tom? What sort of awkward, uh, awkward moments have you found yourself in? A um, couple of months ago, I tried to do a runner from an Uber. I was absolutely leathered on a night out. <laughs> and, uh, and the fella's driving, driving me home, and he starts going the long way round. And I say, I know what's going on here, dickhead. You're trying to overcharge me, you're trying to fleece me. So he pulls out outside my house, and I have it on my toes straight away. <laughs> hit the curb, and just as I'm face planting, I think I've already paid for this fucking thing. <laughs> but you know the best thing? He gave me a five star rating. <laughs> Nicola, what's the most awkward moment you've experienced? Oh, do you know what? I was on a, um, you know, the ski lifts. Yeah. And um, I, I was on a snowboard. And so it's really awkward when you get on a ski lift and you snowboard. You have to take one foot out and then you've got to put one leg on one side. And anyway, I've like, I've fallen off. But not only did I fall off the little chair lift thing, it dragged me halfway up, <laughs> up the hill. <laughs> and I couldn't get off it. It was no. so embarrassing. <laughs> what, and everyone could see you just being dragged by yeah. a ski lift hanging onto a snowboard. <laughs> yeah. Can I be honest? <laughs> out of everything we've heard tonight, that was the one I wish I could have seen. <laughs> to see that. Um, I always think, as boxers, weigh-ins look uncomfortable. Can I be honest? A public weigh-in oh, is my worst nightmare. <laughs> the, I won't get on the scales if, if my wife's in the bathroom. Like, <laughs> I, I, is, that is, I'd be more scared of the weigh-in than any fight I could have after that, of standing in my pants yeah. on scales in front of a load of people. It would be horrific. Rom, how, do you, how would you fare in a public weigh-in? Uh, well, I'm the sim same as you. I don't really like my... I, I, I went to the bathroom once, looked in the mirror, I was so disgusted at my body. I went back to the bedroom, I apologised to my wife for my body. <laughs> and she accepted my apology. <laughs> now, but, but actually, let me tell you something. Uh, the, the thing is, James, is that I'm very self-conscious about my body. Freddie, the other night, oh. he basically publicly shamed me on Twitter. On Twitter, yes, on Twitter. I saw this. So yeah. I was doing a show and I had to take my top off for the show. Well, basically, Freddie took a snapshot, a screenshot of me with my top off. I think we've got it. <laughs> <laughs> your buddy looks And then so the whole sad. night I was getting tweets going, Ron, why is your tummy so sad? 
<laughs> it does look sad, though. It looks like a sort of uh, like a, like a puppet you'd find in a Jim Henson movie <laughs> that you'd sort of find in a cave, which sort of goes, "Hi guys." <laughs> <laughs> Rom, I'm saying this, I've got one myself. My torso looks permanently surprised. <laughs> it's like this. <laughs> uh, Vlad, what do you think about during a way and when you're staring someone, when you're that close to the opponent's face? What's going through your mind? You know, you always look like in one eye, then you switch to the other one, like, did you prepare well? Are you gonna fight well? Are you gonna fight back? When are you gonna go down? Right, come on, give it or... a go with me. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Give me everything you got. You got, you got, no, you got everything like... you got. How close are we going here? So, you know, like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Just don't, <laughs> don't, what? don't look. What? No, 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 no. What? Don't what? look. What? Don't get too short. Really? Yeah. yeah. So where do we Look go? At, like, so where am I? You need to keep the distance because you know some other occasions people right. kiss. Whoa, 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 the whoa. way people kiss. I don't want this to become real. So, <laughs> nor do you. Believe me. Okay? But you know what I'm doing. You know what I'm doing. Whoa, whoa, Just, whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah. I don't touch you. What's this? What's this? I okay. don't touch it. Okay. So, what I want to say, just keep the distance. Yeah, I'm deep in the zone. What I want to say, <laughs> <laughs> at least, I'm not showing you my back. That means I'm taking my challenge, so you do, look, too. You look at him, he's absolutely shitting himself. <laughs> <laughs> look, you see, he's gone. He's gone. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, mate. If we did the old way and you wouldn't even know where I'm looking. <laughs> At our first contender for most awkward moment, Vladimir, you might remember this. Oh wow! No. <laughs> <laughs> Vladimir. <laughs> I just want to say, it is embarrassing even you watch it now. Uh, <laughs> I was trying to show my, you know, footballer skills, but somehow my shoe didn't. Match with the ball much. <laughs> yeah, it's the shoe's fault. As it's you can the shoe's see. Fault. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's look at another one of our awkward <laughs> moments. Here's Real Madrid's Sergio Ramos holding the Copa del Rey on an open top bus. <laughs> Did anything like that ever happen with your Liverpool celebrations? No. We didn't win any trophies when I was there. <laughs> <laughs> now, Sergio Ramos has gained quite the reputation as a footballing villain. Here he is helpfully showing Mo Salah the easiest way to dislocate a shoulder. Um, <laughs> What do you make of Sergio Ramos? I mean, what he did was that was you know he injured Mo and he damaged Liverpool's. I mean, Liverpool didn't win as a res direct result of arguably what he did there, and he's damaged Liverpool's chances of the following season. So I absolutely love him. To be honest with you. <laughs> but I think that Sergio Ramos is that kind of guy that you want. He's the the prick of your team. Do you know what I mean? You, you, you yeah. don't you don't you don't want to play against him, but you love having him on your team. This horrible sort of bastard. Do you know what I mean? Mm. That's why we got you, mate. <laughs> Fred, who's the who's the cricketing equivalent of Sergio Ramos? What a bit of a dickhead? No one likes. <laughs> Kevin Peterson. <laughs> Vladimir, was it the game you played? You went. Do you think he meant it? <laughs> <clears throat> you know, in this, any sport, things getting competitive. We can talk about it a lot, you know, what was wrong, what was right, and however. Um, important is at the end, the person or the team that performs better is winning. Even sometimes, as I told you with my experience, not winning, but actually winning the hearts of fans in a certain way, which means a lot. So it doesn't matter what language do you speak, what skin color do you have, what, whatever other heritage you have. If you perform, that's the language people around the world understand. And that's exactly what's happening in boxing, in soccer, in any other sport, basically. So yes or no? <laughs> Let me... <laughs> 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 All right, let's get back to the question. 
Here's Steve McLaren showing some misguided confidence in England as they faced Iceland at Euro 2016. It's been the perfect response. You'd think that, no problem, start again, keep dominating, keep getting uh, pressure on the Iceland back four. The only thing that they have got is the big boy up front, Sigurdsson, who really, Sig Thorsen... Oh, my oh, word. My oh. Tell us, talk us through that, Steve. I think we know what's happened, but talk us through it. <laughs> issue with this is why are Sky even televising this? Everyone who's watching that has got Sky and therefore got a TV. Who's going, I'm not going to watch the match. I want to watch Steve McLaren yeah. talk about it. <laughs> I mean, Jamie, punditry gaffes is very much your area of expertise. <laughs> You've made some wonderful gaffes over your time. I've got a few of my favourite Jamie Redknapp quotes here. I bet you didn't um, look that far, did you? These are, these are all 100% genuine. Steven Gerrard makes runs into the box better than anyone else. So does Frank Lampard. <laughs> <laughs> this is a real favourite of mine. Real Madrid aren't in the same league as Barcelona. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they are. <laughs> and, and this one for me... <laughs> no. Peter Schmeichel. We'll be like a father figure to attack the smother. <laughs> yeah, but it's his dad. <laughs> that's an urban myth. I never said that. Jamie, that's the only one that's actually correct. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Red Team, it's time to lock in your answers. Which moments did our viewers vote the most awkward? Let's lock them in on your touch screen, please. Yeah. Well, if it's wrong, you can we'll take that yeah. anyway, can't you? <laughs> All right, Jamie, who have you... Who have you gone for? No, I like it. So we've gone Steve McLaren with the awkward punditry, Ramos with the trophy drop, and we've gone Vladimir with the football skills. All right, let's have a look and see if you're right. I can tell you at number three, with 14% of the vote, it's Vladimir Klitschko's Keep It Up You Fail. And number two, with 24%, is Steve McLaren's oh. punditry gaffe. That means at number one, with 62% of the votes, the audience have chosen Sergio Ramos dropping the Copa del Rey as the most awkward moment. Well done, Red Team. You scored one point. <laughs> and the end of that round, the Red Team are in the lead. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs> Welcome back to A League of Their Own on Sky One. Our next round is all about these two champions. the planet Vladimir Klitschko. <laughs> it's so great to have you both here. It really, really is. Vladimir, let's start with you. I've got to tell you, it's, it's a true honour to have you on the show. A, a genuine... It's mutual, thank you. ...boxing legend. Uh, you were the champion for an incredible 12 years. Does it feel weird in your life now not to have a big fight to prepare for? Well, basically, you never lose fighter's heart. You just choose different battlefield. And I'm glad to say that I stopped last year of being an athlete after 27 years. And it was under my terms, not of terms of destiny, my health, or someone else. So it was my decision. Were you not even remotely tempted to have a rematch with Anthony Joshua and go and do it in Vegas or something and just have one last fight and try and beat him? Do you still want to see the rematch? Yes! Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I, I'm not... You never say never. I'm not planning to come back, and if I fight again, then it's going to be for charity. 
Uh, what's next for you? What is the thing that you think, oh, I really want to do that? I have created a method, and uh, it's called challenge management. And um, I actually brought a book with me. It just um, came out uh, in five languages. It's uh, you should plug it. It's, if you want. it's English version. <laughs> <laughs> I signed it for you, James. Did you? Um, so oh. you can handle any challenges oh, you need in your honor. life. Um, you have in your life. Oh, I love that. I've got, that really is magical for all of us. That's it, it now. <laughs> it? I will never, ever have a challenge in my life. Because you know what I'll do? I'll turn problems into challenges. But seriously, if, if you... Oh, look at that, I've got a problem now, <laughs> Vladimir. <laughs> Desk broken. The second you gave me this book, I've never... 13 seasons, I haven't had well, a problem with a this. Well, a challenge now. <laughs> yeah, it's a challenge now. <laughs> <laughs> to our homegrown champion, Nicola Adams. Yes. Thank you for being here. We love it every time you come to the show. Um, you turn professional now. Here you are, staring down your next opponent. I've got to say, <laughs> I, I fancy you to win that one. I do. I do. Uh, now, Vladimir is scary. There's no denying it. He's a scary man. You always seem too nice to be a boxer. You're always so full of joy and love. How did you get into boxing? Oh, it was actually by accident. Um, my mum used to do aerobics and she couldn't get a babysitter one night for me and my brother. And she took us down to an after-school boxing class that they had and I absolutely loved it. Absolutely. Now, you were the first woman to ever win Olympic gold at boxing. The first woman to ever win Olympic gold. That's incredible. <laughs> um, what have you found making the step to professional? Really good, really exciting. Um, I liked the, I like a challenge, and I felt like as an amateur, I'd, I'd won every um, medal, uh, every tournament that you can actually win as an amateur boxer. So I wanted a new goal and a new challenge. So I decided to turn professional, and I found that I get a lot more time to myself as well. Uh, now that you've turned pro, that changes the way that you'll have fights. Is there any type of boxer that you're particularly wary of? Oh, do you know what? It's the pretty ones. Because the pretty ones don't get hit. If you listen to Muhammad Ali, he's always talking about how pretty he was, how fast he was, Sugar Ray Leonard. That you know, must make Jamie the hardest good. boxer in the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, in honour of having two boxing superstars on the show, we've devised a fighting game with a difference. Rom and Tom, you're up for this, so if you can go and get changed, this is On The Ropes. <laughs> Tom will compete in two rounds of heavyweight boxing. However, they will be suspended in the air and propelled into each other by their teammates. I will be the judge and will decide the winner. I think our fighters are standing by, so let's get ready to rumble! In the blue corner, he's just come down from his beat stalk. He's the giant big Tom. that one day you're going to do a ring walk and you'll be flanked by Vladimir Klitschko and Freddie Freitas. <laughs> For a boy from Croydon, this is fucking living. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's bring out his opponents. In the red corner, it's our very own Shrelakan heavyweight. Give it up for the lazy eye and the sexy Robert Let's have a little face-off here. Let's bring our boxers in and stare each other down. Here we go. 
don't know if I can do this. Romesh, I respect him so much. I don't know if I can do it, Fred. You're going down, dickhead. <laughs> Nice to see some mutual respect there. OK, now, let's get into the ring and get ourselves ready. <laughs> Come on, Ron. You've got this, mate. How are you feeling up there? You OK? I was hoping to have kids this year. <laughs> Do you know what, James? I had a little bit of spare dignity hanging around. It's good to burn that off, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> well, listen, best of luck. <laughs> good luck, Robert. Good luck, Tom. Here we go. Your time starts when you hear the bell. <laughs> it's in, Tom. Come on, Ron. Hello! <laughs> yes, Tom. Yes, Tom. Come on, Ron. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Go on, Ron. Come on, Ron. Come on, Tom. Come on, Ron! Hold your hands up! You're an embarrassment! <laughs> Come on, Ron! Come on, Ron! <laughs> All right, that's round one. <laughs> Tell me what's going on. You've got 30 seconds. 30 seconds here. You should have heard what he was saying about you before. What did he say? He said you look like an extra from The Greatest Showman. <laughs> Come on! Huh? He said you're a freak. He said you're a mug. He said he's going to have you. Come on! Come on! Come on! Let's be you! Come on! <laughs> oh my god! I've got to be honest, mate. Listen, you're embarrassing me. You're embarrassing Nicola. You're embarrassing your kids. Start livening up. Come and have a drink. <laughs> Come on. You've got to do better, mate. You've got to do better. Come on. All right, good luck, Nicola. Good luck, Vladimir. And best of luck Come to Romesh and Tom. Break. Round Come two, on, take it away, go. Come on, Tom. Come on, Tom. The fight is over, it is done, but I am going to give... I'm going to give a unanimous decision. I'm going to give the points to Freddie Flintoff, Tom Davis and Vladimir <laughs> Pisco. I'm going to give the points to the blue team! <laughs> At the end of that round, the red team are in the lead. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the League of Run on Sky One. We finish with the right guard challenge, where the time our teams get to answer questions is determined by how long their opponents take to complete a sporting challenge. Tom and Ramesh are doing this one tonight. Let's see what they're up against. Now, this challenge requires the speed of a hamster, the determination of a hamster, and the stamina of a hamster. Yes, <laughs> it's the hamster wheel. Now, here's how it works. Each team has the time it takes the opposition player to run their wheel from the studio floor to the top of the audience to answer questions. Tom, you're up first. Go over and get strapped in. Give him a round of applause, everybody. <laughs> Tom, how are you feeling about this? You ready for this? You know what? This could be my calling. <laughs> I, I think if that speedboat in things a sport, so could this be. <laughs> All right, so, Tom, once you're in the wheel, Red Team, you'll be answering questions. Good luck, Tom. Good luck, Red Team. Your time starts 
Now. Well done, Red Team. You scored four points. Let's have a look at a replay. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> Who thought being an answer was harder than being a boxer? OK, uh, Romesh, it's your turn. You ready to head inside, Rom? Yeah, buzz in, mate. Buzz in. <laughs> Come on, Rom, you've got this. How's that shred of dignity you were talking about working out, Rom? <laughs> they, they should make this the British citizenship test. <laughs> <laughs> All right, your time starts. Vladimir? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm just all, all about that. Blue team, you're answering questions. Your time starts now. Name <laughs> three teams promoted to this season's Premier League. Fulham. Fulham Wolves and Cardiff. Yes, but no. Name three boxers who have beaten Vladimir Klitschko. Cock and Fury, uh, Andy Joshua. <laughs> well done, a sterling effort. <laughs> well played, Romesh, you did great. Well done, buddy. Well done, Blue Team, you scored six points, which means tonight's show was a draw. Well done to both teams. Jamie, Ronis and Nicola, Freddie, Tom and Vladimir. You've been watching the League of on Sky One. Until next time. Good night. When the players score this Super Sunday, do you reckon one of them will do a little Theresa May dance? Maybe. Kick off and all the big games is at one on Sky Sports Premier League. <laughs>